What's up guys? Uh, so we're just finishing up this Jeep here and I didn't do a build video on it uh, because I didn't do much of the work. It was mostly Corey. Uh, but I'm gonna be showing you everything that we did and everything that's done to it, everything that was previously done to it. And there's a lot of cool stuff on it. So check it out. So we'll uh, start our way up front underneath and then we'll work our way back and then uh, go check out the top side. So first things first, we got these uh, Dynatrack axles. Uh, those are the XD Rock Pro 60. They're Dana 60s with some cool stuff on them. Super beefy axles. And holding them up is a metal cloak uh, lift kit, four link. Uh, we did the, originally, check this out, we had a bit of a problem. Originally, we went with the uh, lock and load setup, uh, which is what was recommended to us by Metal Cloak, but that didn't work, so we had to go to the true four link, which you can see here, um, and we just kept the lock and load setup, uh, lower control arms, it's not that big of a deal. These still, there's still clearance here at full squat, so no problem there. Uh, we got the six pack shocks. Um, I had to make custom spacers, which are not installed yet there, uh, to go with the Dynatrack axles with this lift kit. And you can see a little sneak preview of the engine and trans there. And then right here we got a Atlas 4-speed billet transfer case, which is a super gangster piece. Uh, and then here is the exhaust that I just whipped up uh, yesterday. Oh geez, tripping over things. So uh, we got two and a quarter merges to three and then single three and it comes back and dumps right there. Uh, plenty of clearance. This stays up there so it's uh, not gonna hit anything ever. And then back here Corey's still working on this wiring. Uh, we got an air system, boom, dual compressors and a little tank to handle the, uh, we got air quick disconnects for the sway bar along with the air lockers and the front and rear differentials. So we got that, got some Nitto Terra Grappler 40s, 40 by 17. So, big beefy tires right there. And then these guys, I had to custom make them. Uh, the ones that came with the, I think they came with the Metal Cloak kit. Uh, they just weren't up to my standard. They were like, I'll show you those. So this is how they set it up. And it is a few different pieces of rod with these little threaded pieces that go in between. And then you just attach them. It would do the job, but it's just not uh, not as nice as I would like. And then right here, we got some rock sliders that he had powder coated. Um, I don't know what brand these are, but the fitment on them was meh. Uh, we had to cut this tab off because that in this lower four link used the same tab. And then we weren't able to uh, there's a hole up there and there was no way to drill it without lifting the body off of the frame. Um, and that's just kind of stupid. So we bolted it down low and then we're going to drop a weld on each side and that should be fine. We also have these skid plates here, uh, which are going on soon. Once everything else is finished, uh, they will need to be modified slightly to fit with the, uh, fit with the engine because the oil pan sits a little lower than the factory. So uh, we have to kind of cut a big hole for the oil pan to stick out through, I believe. So starting up here, of course, we got a big ass worn winch. Uh, we got a Genrite front bumper, ton of rigid lights all over the place. Pretty sweet. Got these super nice headlights. And then you could see as we move back, uh, this isn't the ride height, by the way. It does drop a pretty significant amount uh, just for the dry ride height. 
Um, and then we got metal cloak armor all the way down and along the sides. Along with the, this, don't know what brand this is, but seems to fit pretty nice. Walk you around the back. Another Gen Right rear bumper, along with the big tire carrier, which is pretty sweet. Don't know what this is, but oh well. But super nice piece here. Can't go wrong with that. Then up here, we got a bunch of super sweet hood vents, which are very useful when you're crawling because uh, you don't have a lot of air movement. That will pop. And here is a 6.2 LS motor stuffed in there, very cramped, no room for anything, but she'll have power to move these, uh, these big tires and everything. Uh, we got dual batteries right there. This wiring is not, not us. Don't worry about that. It's, uh, it's not the messiest, but it's, it's busy. I'll give it that. Um, but yeah, mostly, I think it's mostly a stock LS here. Uh, nothing too crazy. Got the, uh, power steering reservoir for the, uh, hydro steering assist. Definitely necessary on the trails. And then that's about it up here. In the interior, it's, uh, it's pretty simple. Here, let me pop up there. Yep, uh, so we installed these oh shit handles on both sides. Um, and then previously installed was this uh, switch panel there. And then a little switch panel here for the lights. Um, only one of them. Oh, it might be dead right now, but... You know, basic, pretty simple interior. But you do got the... Uh, the twin transfer case sticks which is pretty sweet but yeah yeah not too much going on in there and here is the first start with the exhaust that i whipped up Yee! that sounds sick yeah So that's pretty sick. Uh, he wanted it quiet, so that is quiet. Um, but it's still got like a nice aggressive tone. So I think he's gonna be really happy with it because I'm really happy with it. Besides a little belt squeak, if you heard that, but frick that. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, we enjoyed making this super rad Jeep. So uh, be sure to hit like, subscribe, 